Hi, this is a demo video of a real-time streaming analytics system we built for nanopore sequencer data. All of the code used to build this is in GitHub, and there's a corresponding blog post on the Google Cloud data and analytics blog. What I'm showing on the screen right now is a visualization of a processed sample, so you can get an idea of how the end user interface works. You can see there are some concentric rings and that each ring is broken into arcs. Going out from the center, the innermost rings represent high-level classes of living things like bacteria, plants, animals, viruses, fungi, etc. The outer rings represent the genomes of individual species or strains of species that were detected in the processed sample. And the size of each arc within a ring is proportional to the amount of each class of thing that was detected in the sample as measured by the amount of DNA reads that were observed from the nanopore sequencer. For example, you can see that bacteria accounted for 97% of the DNA in the sample and that E. coli was 9% of that. The chart is dynamic and we can drill down to see the details of each subgroup. For example, if I click on Enterobacteriaceae, we can see that that is mostly composed of Escherichia, but there's also Shigella, Klebsiella, and Salmonella present. Clicking on the center disk goes back up a level, and repeatedly clicking it will take you all the way back up to the root so you can explore the rest of the data. Now let's take a look at how this is used. Here's a diagram to make it easier to understand the design of the application. In the far left lane in beige is the place where a biological sample is being processed and the contents of that sample need to be analyzed to support some downstream business process. For example, the sequencing could be happening in a medical or veterinary clinic, in an agricultural field, or at customs and border control. In the upper left part of the lane is the nanopore sequencer itself and it's emitting DNA reads. In the lower part of the lane is the result of the analysis visualized, which is what I was just showing you a moment ago. The center and right lanes show how the data are being processed. DNA data are uploaded to a cloud storage bucket, and as each DNA read is uploaded, it's put into a streaming analysis pipeline built with Apache Beam. The pipeline performs a series of analyses that ultimately result in the species identification of each DNA read. And cumulative counts are written out to Cloud Firestore every 20 seconds. And the web browser visualization is watching for changes to Firestore. And when the database updates, that triggers a live update of the visualization. So results are available in real time. As part of building this, we made a simulator so we could prepare samples and test them while we were developing. Uh, here I'm showing we're going to upload some DNA reads from a sewage sample, which is what I was showing you a moment ago. It's written in Docker, so I'm going to kick off the Docker process, and it starts uploading DNA reads. Here's the bucket they're going to, and it was empty, and now you can see reads are appearing. The newest ones are at the top, so you can see the timestamps are, are increasing as these are uploaded. Here is the aligner instance group that is actually performing the alignments. It's been running for a while, but looking at the most recent one hour, you can see there's a single instance running. This is what's looking up the DNA in a database to match it to a species. Now I'm showing the visualization of the Apache Beam data flow that's running. So you can see it's reading from a PubSub queue, looking for added files, and that files are coming in, 69, 87, et cetera. The data are live. And the visualization now is beginning to populate. So they're just updated. This is the rest of the pipeline. So you can see there's a bunch of steps that are required to do this processing. 
all the way down to accumulating results. These are species counts, essentially, that are then written to Firestore, which is what's driving the visualization. Here you can see it updated again. And now I'm going to accelerate this, since this has run over approximately three hours, so we can see the updates come in more quickly. You can see that you can drill down and look at this uh, subsections while it's running. And that's it. So it's just going to keep running like this for some time. In this case, we're just doing a survey of what's present in this sewage sample. In other cases where the application user would want to be making a particular decision, they might be looking for the presence or absence of a virus or trying to determine what particular pathogenic bacteria is present in a sample, uh, etc. Here you can see that the alignment cluster was changing in size over the last six hours as the workload was coming in. So it ran up to five, five instances in the group. This is the data flow that was visualized in the diagram I was showing you earlier, but this is actually coming from the source code. So you can see here's where files are being added Then they go in batches of 200 sequences to an aligner. This is calling out to the alignment cluster. And those alignments are grouped and uh, consensus is reached using K-align. Nanopore sequencer reads are a bit noisy, so we need to do an error correction step. And then the taxa the species that each of those um, aligned reads corresponds to is collected. So we map the, the read to a species, and then we count up the number of times we saw each species and write that out to Firestore. And then Firestore is, is again, integrated with the web visualization so that when Firestore updates, the visualization updates. And you can see that there's been 423 updates in this step over there on the right, which corresponds to the number of times the visualization updated. And here's just some general stats about how long it's been running.